and DNIS, you know, is probably the least common used, you know, when it comes to DIDs and stuff like that. Um, most people, I try to explain to most people what, you know, what a DNIS is, is, is it's really like a big routing table. We tell the short tail system, when you receive a call on this phone number, route it here, and we just create a big list of, you know, of these phone numbers that can be used. The biggest use for DIDs is, or, or biggest use for DNIS is when an extension already has a DID assigned to it, but maybe we need to route two or three phone numbers to the same destination. Well, we can only assign one DID, but we can build as many DNS entries into the, you know, for that extension. So we can have local phone numbers in all of your markets, all pointing to one customer service group or, you know, ECCQ. And that's where DNS come in is you, you just build a big routing table and says, you know, these phone numbers all go to the same destination. The other use for, for DNS is when a call comes in and we want to route it to a destination, but maybe we, we want to display a name or, you know, or what type of phone number the person called in on. So using DNIS, we can actually on the short tail phones and in the software, we can display a, a dialed number field as a text field. So we can tell them that this call came in on our 800 number listed on Google. So that when they, the, the, the user taking the call, knows what phone number this person called in on or if we have a phone number we're, we're forwarding from one office as a temporary forward to another because one office is closed down for remodeling we can allow the users to know that this call is being forwarded from the Seattle office to the Portland office using a you know a dialed number tag ag against the DNIS. The other nice use for DNIS is to specify music on hold so traditionally in, in your in your short tail system you've you know, had one music on hold probably for your for your whole system or your whole, you know, all of your locations. Well, using DNS, we can actually say when this phone number comes in, go to this extension and play this music on hold file when they're placed on hold. If, they, you know, anytime a user places them on hold or we're queuing up a call or something like that, that we can control the music on hold on a per call basis. The other options, you know, for, for music on hold usually are limited to like user groups. So this gives us the most flexibility as far as music on hold is using a DNS. And we can put as many music on hold files as we want on the short tail server and then, you know, play different music on hold. So some companies want different music on hold by department or by product line if they support multiple product line. And that's how we can accomplish um, the different music on hold capabilities is using the DNS map. So how do I add a DNS entry, you know, if we're do, using it for secondary, you know, failover and maybe we only care about our, our main five phone numbers that we're going to fail over, we're not going to fail over all the user DIDs, you know, how do I put those in the system? So very similar to adding a DID range, we're going to go to shortware director, we're going to go to trunks, and we're, and we're going to go to trunk groups, and then we're going to select either a PRI or a SIP trunk, because those are traditionally, you know, the, the trunk groups that support DNS entries. One thing we're going to notice again is the number of digits from the CO. Are we getting four digits from the phone company? Are we getting 10? Because that we need to match that with the digits that we build into our routing table for DNS. Then we're going to click on that edit DNS map button. And sometimes when you click that button, it'll give you an error saying the DNS map isn't enabled. There's just a little checkbox on the left that says DNS that turns on. That just turns on and off that feature. One note is if you ever, if it's already checked, and you uncheck and hit the save button, you will erase everything in your DNS table. Same thing with the DID. If you uncheck the DID box and hit save, you will delete every DID assigned to your users from this trunk group. So words of caution, don't uncheck the boxes. If you do uncheck them and hit save, we have to restore a backup to restore them. There's, you know, there's no simple undo. So in this case, we're gonna hit the edit DNS map button. And it's going to take us to a new uh, a new page, which you see on the bottom of the screen, that shows us a list of of our DNS entries. You can see here I've added in those those same you know DIDs as DNS entries onto our secondary trunk group. So if our calls fail over, we can go use this. So if somebody calls in the five 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 one two one two, the dialed number field is what we're going to display to our agent or user. So you're going to see test DID for hunt group. And that's what's going to display to the user. And then on the right, you can see the music on hold files that I've selected. You know, it, it, there's just a drop-down box as you're adding them. So to add a new one, 
in the received digits, so we put in our 10-digit phone number, the dialed number, we type in whatever text we want to display to our to our employees, select an extension in the destination, and select. If we don't select the music on hold, it'll use the user group default, you know, the default music on hold setup in the system. We simply hit the add this record and hit the save button, you know, and you can add in, you know, you know, as many DNS entries in most cases as you need into the system. And then these DNS entries are applied to the different short tail switches. So if a server were to go down, we can still route calls to these DNS destinations based on the routing tables built into your short tail switches.